this program, we discuss some of the important aspects of providing an efficient and economic pollination service for crop growers, rather than the more traditional venture of honey production from bees. European honeybees were successfully introduced into Australia around 1882, essentially to help the early settlers pollinate horticultural and legume crops that were used to produce food for human consumption and livestock. Around 65% of agricultural production in Australia depends on pollination by European honeybees. In Australia, at least 35 industries are dependent on honeybee pollination for most of their production. Crops vary in how much they rely on or respond to pollination by bees. Some industries, such as almonds, apples, cucurbits and cherries, depend almost totally on bees for fruit and nut production. The potentially devastating impact of exotic pests such as varroa mite, which is yet to reach Australia, pose a significant threat to honeybees and our pollination services. By way of background, the benefit of honeybee pollination to the horticultural and general farming communities is said to be $1.7 billion, according to the Centre for International Economics 2003 Rurdic Report. Pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen from the male part of the flower, the stamen, to the female part of the flower, the stigma, either within the same flower or between flowers of the same species. Honeybees are very hairy little insects that become covered in pollen as they forage during their daily flights. In the process, the tiny pollen grains on their bodies are transferred from the male part to the female part of the plant and from one plant to another. While other insects and weather play a role in crop pollination, honeybees are by far and away the most important pollinating insects in rural Australia as they visit the same crop on the same field. It's said that if all the honeybees were excluded from this process, crop yields in, say, almonds would fall by a massive 100%. In kiwi fruit, the figure would be around 90%, peaches 60%, pumpkins 90%, and for tomatoes, a drop of 10%. Hive stocking rates will vary tremendously with each crop, its location, and competition from nearby flora. But as a general rule, six to seven hives per hectare are required for almonds, five to eight hives per hectare for kiwi fruit, two hives per hectare for peaches, and two to seven hives per hectare for pumpkins. Beekeepers providing a pollination service to crop growers need to be aware of the trade-off between good honey production from traditional flora and usually fairly poor honey production from areas of crop pollination. And there are often additional management practices that need to be introduced such as supplementary feeding colonies of pollen substitute or sugar syrup to build up colony stores when pollinating crops. A budget to compare the return from honey production and a pollination contract should be undertaken by the beekeeper to compare the best option. It's essential to have a written agreement between beekeepers and crop growers or pollination brokers who may hire your colonies. Agreements should cover delivery dates, removal dates, colony strength, location of colonies in the crop, notification of pesticide use and insurance matters. Beekeepers should take the lead in decision making where bees are concerned. If the crop is poor, it might be advisable to tell the grower he or she is wasting money. Similarly, it's important to locate the bees in the best spots depending on the season. Early spring warm locations encourage better foraging and more flights a day, increasing pollination results. Crop growers are paying beekeepers for their expert knowledge in all these matters. Monitoring pollination performance is very important to keep both the beekeeper and the crop grower happy. Visit the crop regularly and look for evidence of bees foraging. If necessary, discuss the crop grower management techniques that will improve results from pollinators. This might take the form of controlling weeds in a crop that compete for the bees pollinating efforts. Demonstrate to the grower or broker the colony strength. A minimum strength colony should consist of six frames covered with bees and four frames of brood. 
It's very important that the colony is disease free and is led by a young queen with at least 25% of the brood in the early larval stages. This will stimulate the colony to make pollen foraging trips, thus increasing the pollination potential of the colony. Beekeepers must control swarming and do routine husbandry to keep colonies expanding. Be professional at all times and provide the crop grower with a business card so that he can make contact if required. The use of infrared cameras is being researched to determine colony strength without the need to open colonies and provide a printout to the beekeeper and grower. Plant breeders are using honeybees in enclosed hothouses or cages to pollinate crops to produce seed to develop new lines across many vegetable crop species. Expertise, time and the cost incurred to provide a pollination service must be financially rewarding. So it's strongly suggested to set a fair hiring fee that will compensate for the loss of honey production but also cover the other costs and risks. Only in this way will beekeepers see the financial sacrifice of honey production compensated by the fees generated from the pollination service. Music